um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, this is the Planning and Zoning Commission. Obviously, it's October 5th, uh, 2016, and I'm going to tr try to go through a couple of, of, some of you have been here, some of you haven't, the process and how the, how the, the flow of the meeting goes. Uh, we will be, first thing we're going to do is after I finish this is we're going to read the legal notice for the, the meeting. And then uh, we're going to ask applicants to come forward who are on the agenda to explain to the commission and to the public what is specifically being requested of the property that they're, they're here about. Written comments from town agencies are going to then be read into their record uh, and uh, that the, and any other uh, information the commission has received. The commissioners will then ask qualifying uh, their questions to, to clarify the application, and then the public will be invited to ask questions. Uh, and when we're all done with all the questions, we're going to ask members of the public who are here to eat, if, that are interested in an application to either have the chance to oppose it or uh, be supportive of it. As this is a public hearing, it will be necessarily necessary for anyone coming forward to uh, speak or ask questions to make sure they identify themselves, use the microphone, uh, please give us your name and your address. At the conclusion of all statements when the public, uh, from the public and the applicant, I will close the public hearing on the application. The applicant and the public are then free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearings or hearing and the regular and at the regular meeting in which time the commission will discuss each application under consideration and try to reach a decision each applicant will then be notified in writing as to the decision of this commission the applicant and or aggrieved party or any aggrieved party with legal standing that will have the right to appeal our decision to superior court within the statutory time frame if they so desire all decisions reached by this commission at this meeting will be available to the public the next day by either visiting or calling the Planning and Zoning Commission at 453-8039 after 9.30 in the morning. Seated for the meeting tonight are all the members that are here. We have Alan Brown, George Underhill, Richard Wallace, Tom Cost, Rich Meyer, Phil Johnson, Frank DeAndrea. Uh, staff that are here are George Crawl, Reggie Reed, Lisa Brewer, I got them all, and Peter Schultz. All right, so um, please read the official notice. Legal notice of the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will be holding a public hearing on October 5th, 2016 at 7.30 p.m., location being the Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, in the Manukatuck Room on the second floor for the following purpose. Country Realty, 3049 Boston Post Road, Map 83, Lot 3, Zone R7. Special Permit Accessory Structure over 750 square feet. Request to build a 40 foot by 32 foot, being 1280 square foot garage behind the house where sunroom and garage once stood, section 273-94. Copies of these applications are available for inspection in the Office of Planning and Zoning Commission, Town Hall South 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut. At this hearing, persons may attend and be heard and written communications will be received. Dated at Guilford, Connecticut, this 19th day of September, 2016, Tom Cost, Chairman. Thank you. Um, first up is uh, Country Realty. Is anybody here representing this application? This, this has to have two meetings, you know that, right? So there'll be one tonight, and then we have to wait until the next meeting, which is the 19th, um, to, to a formally close the public hearing in case anybody else wants to come to a second meeting. Okay. Go ahead, sir. I'm Anthony Bigwell, uh, owner of 3049 Boston Post Road. And I'd like to put up uh, a garage there. There was already some, you know, uh, garage back there that collapsed and uh, sunroom in that area. And 
I also want to use it for some of my farm equipment that I have out there. And I, you know, we run a nursery there and farm stand. And The farm stand, is this on the one that's on going west? Is it on the south side of the of Route 1? Isn't this the one on the corner of uh, the west side? No. Moose Hill? No. no. It's the one right before Bill Miller's. It's, yeah, it's the one right before Bill Miller's. Okay. All right. Yeah. On the same side as Bill Miller's. Okay. All right. Right on the Just Guilford, Brant, North Brantford line. Right on 22 there. Uh -huh. Yeah, nice place. We all have. Yeah. So this is your barn? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you're going to put, are you going to put electricity in it? Uh, no. Okay. Not a poor slab. Not a poor slab. There were slabs there already okay. from all the stuff that was there. Some of the pictures from that also. Sorry, and I'm more organized. Does the staff have a little late tonight? Does the staff have any of this stuff that he's in the out? Um, yes, I can explain. Uh, a little over a year ago, Mr. Diglio bought property in Guilford and he established a farm stand. It's the property where the two large greenhouses are and it, there's usually a lot of flowers right now. There's a lot of pumpkins. There was an existing two-story wood frame house on the property. Behind the house, there was a garage that was in very bad condition. So he demolished the garage and there was a freestanding sunroom really close to the garage and he demolished that. And his proposal now is to build a 40 foot by 32 foot garage right on the same cement pad. And as you see from the drawings, um, it's going to be uh, big enough to have two garage doors. Does that need to set that requirements? Oh, yes, it does. I, it, it's not a, uh, an apartment, it's just a garage. Uh, to the house reason equipment. it's a special permit is, is because it's in excess of 750 square feet. Are there any limits on the number of buildings that you can have on a property? No. You cannot exceed lot coverage. Okay. That's the caveat. And this property has, uh, this is quite a bit of acreage here. The garage will be 19 feet 10 inches tall. It will be under 20 feet, which is what the regulation asks for. A letter from Dennis Johnson, Director of Health, dated October 4th. Subject being Country Realty, 3049 Boston Post Road, Map 83, Lot 3. The applicant's accessory structure will be constructed in area behind the house where the former garage and sunroom were located. The proposed garage will not conflict with the location or function of the septic system currently serving the main house. It is recommended that the applicant special permit be approved. Okay. Anthony, would you state for the record how many acres of land you own there? It's three and a half acres. So he's got plenty of lot okay. coverage. Okay. Any questions? Anybody else? Is there any, anybody in the audience that would like to ask a question about this application? Anybody here uh, in opposition to the application? not okay so I guess what we do is we'll continue this meeting till the 19th till the 19th of um, October okay. and you're all set thank you sir. two weeks from tonight <clears throat> we're good yeah okay okay we're this is the second uh, public hearing for Neil Dinnerman 
2631 Durham Road. Mr. Denneman. I'd like to start off with, I apologize to the board. You guys have been great to me from the, the location in town and last week, but I was just so, not an excuse, I was surprised and I behaved not like myself and I wanted to apologize to everybody here. Um, I bought my house in 2000, uh, did I give you the address? 2631 Durham Road. I bought my house in 2002, um, 15 or 17 years before I bought my house, the Williamsons, Victoria and Doug Williams, renovated, um, they renovated all the structures and they constructed a new stable. When they renovated the structures, um, they had put in, I, I don't know what was there, but they put in furnace, electricity, water, um, insulation, and they had an accessory apartment with a living room, and I think there's a diagram, I think the total is about 590 square feet, with a living room, a kitchen, a full bath, and an 11 by 11 foot bedroom, as I recall the, the size of it. Um, I bought the house when I was living in Florence, Italy. I had never had bought anything, for, a book from Amazon for $10 online. Uh, but when I decided to come back to the United States, I saw this and I said, this is great. And I liked all the features about it. Um, I'm in the process of selling my house. And uh, Miss Reed, pointed out to me, I guess it was about two, two and a half, in 2014, that this is nice, but this was never done with a permit. And it wasn't disclosed to me when I bought the house on July 15, 2002. And uh, Miss Reed recommended, she says, you know, you need a permit for this. So, you know, I've been concentrating on getting my 19-year-old um, son, who I've raised by myself, um, off to college. He's now successfully in, I hope successfully, in an honors engineering program at UConn. And I thought it's time for me to take care of the house. When I sell the house, the property, I don't want to sell it the way it was sold to me um, without disclosing that things weren't kind of kosher, if I can use that word, or with permit. Um, I've added nothing. I haven't added anything there other than if there was a toilet, I upgraded the toilet. You know, if there was X amount of floor, I just upgraded that. There has been no physical change to that building since either 1985 or 1987. And then, as you know, I think it's Dennis Johnson in his name, the health department came out and checked and um, found the records that it was my septic system, which I guess includes the leaching fields. And I never lived in the country before, so this stuff is new to me, um, was fine for a four-bedroom home, um, and that's my story. I can't add it. Can I sit down or? Oh, sorry. I, I, I would like to ask a question. Sure. Uh, I watched the video. I wasn't at the last meeting, but I watched the, vis the video, and it seems like uh, there was an issue of uh, with the neighbors, and it had part of it was uh, some covenants that had to do with the subdivision. I think. Right. I think this gentleman spoke. My question is: This is. I read them, and my son, who owns um, a commercial real estate business in Atlanta, the Dinnerman Group, yeah. as a matter of fact, he read through it, and he sees no conflict, especially since it's been there since 1985 and 1987. That's not what my question is, though. Okay, I'm sorry. Do, do we emphatically know that your house, because you're, that house, I live in North Guilford, that house has been there for, I don't know, Long, long time. 
1790. Do we do we know for fact? Does the town know for fact that that house is subject to this covenant? Because your house is on Durham Road, and the rest of the houses are on Schuyler Drive. Is that correct? I'm not a lawyer. I can't answer that. But I can say that reading through the covenants, that was the first time I got at the meeting. I was never given it at my closing. Reading every page of the covenant, covenants and conditions, um, it conforms to that 100%. Okay. Especially since it's been there since 1985 and 1987. And when I bought it from Vicki Williamson, the first question she asked me, and I was moving here with my five-year-old, Okay. Um, she asked me, you know, we have a tenant down there. We also rent out an art studio there, and we have a tenant in the house. Do you want them? I said, what? No, I don't want any tenants. You know, I want the house for my son and myself. And I thought I'd be returning to work and have <coughs> like um, a nanny or a couple run, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the question. Office. Yes, sir. Um, what is uh, uh, the gentleman has a pre-existing structure, pre-existing apartment, whatever he has? Does the building department ever go and inspect for safety in any way? Is, to means of egress, uh, doorways for propane tanks, anything? You know, like if there's a propane tank there or some. Well, there is. Uh, okay. They have the, the building department has been there or the health department. I think both. Well, Reggie. Uh, I don't know. I never looked to see if there were inspections made. I looked at the uh, file to see, number one, if there were any building permits taken out to right. install a kitchen, and there were not. And as you heard testimony just now from Mr. Dinnerman, it appears that there was a separate rental in the house beside two separate rentals in the uh, outbuilding, which never came to planning and zoning for approvals. I'll tell you what my concern is. And also, can I ask you a question? Sure. And that's, I have no problem with mine being inspected, colonoscopy, whatever. So would that mean I would have the right to have everybody else's? Because after I got the covenants last week, and I read them thoroughly, I think I read them two, three times, and I had, again, my son Justin read through them, He's not a practicing lawyer, but he, he knows law, uh, and not just real estate law. I saw so many infractions, but I mean, people, when I moved there, I want you to know, 14 years ago, a 55-year-old guy with a five-year-old son, I had three people say hello to me. Some of the people that protested last week, I didn't even know their name before that. And I didn't even know I was in a subdivision. If you look at the way, my house is structured. I mean, I think the closest house to me that objects is probably 2,000 feet away. That, that mirrors my experience in town, too. Oh, yeah. Well, this was a little, this was, you know, they nobody said hello. It was Phil Zink, said hello, neighbor, Santa Troll guy, good guy, the Penrys who lived up the hill, but they lost their house. And he's not in the subdivision. But Miss C and Rick, the Berardino, the builder, I mean, he's invited me over, and you know, he's friends with my son, and he was very friendly. So, I mean, people that were objecting to this, I've never talked, I didn't even know their names. The problem is, is that we have to um, apply whatever rules and regulations we have. Of course. And, and, and my concern uh, about a building inspection would be, you know, God forbid a million times you should have a fire and the fire department goes there and they don't have any idea of what's there because there's never been a permit taken out. There's no records in the town. Um, and that's why I'm asking staff if the, there's a means with which we can actually. There is. The homeowner has to invite the building official and or the fire marshal to come to his property and inspect a building. Or take out a building Right. Which they trigger that. So, well, a building permit out. doesn't trigger an inspection. What triggers the inspection is they have to call and request an, ex an inspection. Can we make that a condition of approval? Why? 
And can I have building inspections for all the homes? This is this is about you, not about them. So I mean, if you want to file a complaint with the, the town, problem. you can file a complaint with the town. But they're, you know, to the best of my knowledge, we're just. I mean, there was two weeks ago. I heard a fact that now it's been for 14 years. It's my son, little kid, and me, and a German Shepherd there. Um, some people have eight people living in their house, but they question my usage of water because it has something to do with the water table. I have two people in my house, and I'm not looking to turn it into a bed and breakfast. I'm looking, for, is it like when my son or the future owner has their son or family come there to be able to stay? I mean, I have over the years, when friends come from New York, and you've all had guests come from you, from some place. Mm -hmm. If they, you know, they come for one day, I don't mind them staying in my house. You know, great, you know, stay in the house, but after like two, three days. Then you gotta get rid of them. You know, so, so, so But Mike, another aspect of this would be if you, on, on the town records, if you have a two bedroom house, but in fact you have a four bedroom house, so you have 4,000 square feet instead of 2,000 square feet, there are different tax ramifications too. That I realize. So, and so that's why I'm asking staff whether or not I there's, a, do there's a trigger. Until Reg, Miss Reed, I'm sorry, until Miss Reed approached me and said, hey, you know, this isn't right. I didn't know that it wasn't right, because how could I? Right, so you may have a cause of action against the realtor or the seller. No, it's too late. So I call them. them. And they right. say it's past the statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. I think you could do it in two, three years. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I, you know. Right, so I'll confer with yeah. Ms. Reed. Let me talk about two things, two areas. One, um, with respect to the covenants uh, that may or may not exist, I think we heard, we had conversation at the last hearing and I believe this is my understanding as well, that the private covenants that are created by the subdivision or any, or any kind of private process are not subject to your enforcement. So whether the covenant applies to this property or not, and whether or not is something between the, associ the homeowners association, if there is one, or the other property owners and this owner, it's not something that the Planning and Zoning Commission has the authority to enforce. Hi, now, the, so que so the question, so let me ask, yeah, the second point about making a condition, um, because it's a special permit, you have a lot of latitude in terms of what you can make a condition of approval on it. Just on the surface, it does seem to me you could have a condition of approval that requires that the owner uh, allow the building inspector to make an inspection. Now, whether the building inspector c can following up on that, make him do something to the property, you know, like whatever it might be, change the windows because they're not the right size or whatever it might be. That's something else again. I don't know whether that authority, whether your authority goes that far, but it does seem to me that you can make it a condition of approval that he, that the owner invite the building inspector to come and make an inspection. What about uh, taking out the building? I don't think you can make him take out a building permit if I think, and this is, this is actually a segue into a conversation we're going to have later, uh, actually, hopefully next at your next meeting with town council. I don't think you can make him take out a building permit if it's not otherwise required by the building code. Uh, but that's, again, something I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, there is a statute of limitation. I do know with respect to work that um, is performed without a building permit. The building official told me that told me that there, that's six years is a statute of limitations, during which during which period of time, the building official can make somebody take a building permit out when they haven't taken one. But after six years, it's, it's his understanding, at least the way he explains to me, that he can't do that anymore. This is this work allegedly occurred more than six years ago, as far as I know. But you certainly could require, in my opinion, at least that he, that the owner allow an inspection. Now whether the building, now another issue pursuant to that is the building inspector doesn't work for the Planning and Zoning Commission, he doesn't work for me. Um, he would have to agree that he would go make an inspection. Uh, 
none, none of us can tell him to go make an inspection. Uh, he probably would. Uh, I can't see any reason why he wouldn't do it. Uh, but that's another so, aspect so, of this so what question. About tax ramifications? Um, is there anything we can do or say to trigger, like if there's been a significant improvement that gets somehow or another brought to light in a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, does the town tax people assessor. assessor, does he listen to any of these? Does he care? Does he have an interest? Do we report to him? Does staff tell him? Or is it just we're in the dark and he's in the dark? The, the, building, the, the assessor is informed of all building permits that are issued. Uh, and then and all he receives all the planning and zoning, zoning decisions. Right. What he does with those things, how, how he goes about reassessing based on either building permits or improvements that are made or planning and zoning approvals. That's a subject that I can't really answer that I can't answer. Uh, and again, similar, I mean, he, the assessor, I believe, is um, informed of these activities that occur. Certainly, he gets all building permits, C of O's. He gets copies of all planning and zoning approvals, site plan approvals, subdivision, special permits. Um, what he does with them, how he reassesses based on them, I can't really say. Some things, for example, you know, the issuance of a special permit, um, does that in itself increase the value of the property if the person doesn't actually do the work pursuant to the special permit? Um, maybe it does a little bit because he has some approvals that may add to the value. Whether the assessor increases the assessment or has the authority to increase the assessment just based on the fact that a special permit's been approved even though the work hasn't been done, I don't know the answer to that question, but if the work is done, hopefully it was done with a building permit, and then the uh, assessor would take that into consideration. That's my understanding of how it works. Okay, okay sir. Uh, I'd like to add two things. Go ahead, then we're going to let other people speak. Oh, of course. I just want to. Um, if there is an association. And I said, I, I bought the place July 15th, 2002. <clears throat> 14 plus years ago. I've never been notified of a meeting. Um, I've never gotten notes. I've never gotten anything. I mean, it's a surprise to me. And number two, I hear what you're saying, but I question, since it's been there for 30 years, and that has, even if they didn't have a permit, if they've been having that for 30 years, I also have my real estate. What? Is the, the other houses that are in that subdivision, have they been there 30 years? I don't know. Okay. But I know that the accessory apartment in question was done, so, I'm not exact date, but between 1985 and 1987. So either 31 years ago or 29 years ago, but way over the 15 years, that is, you know, you know the law. So I think you're here for the second meeting. Would you like to add anything? Hi, my name is Al Pacini, and I spoke the last meeting. Uh, I'd just like to stand in on what was said the last meeting, and I'm just here to kind of witness the proceedings. But it, you did ask about the association. Um, what we do, with, uh, there's seven of us there, and Neil being one of them. Um, he, he chips in. We just had some of the road repaid. He, he, he contributes to that. He contributes to the snow plowing. So we all chip in, get together, and we divvy it up, our costs. And some of the plantings, when you enter the road, that are on his property, that was money that we all chipped in and planted that there's a uh, pine tree there that's it's been there so old now it's dying. But um, so in regards to the association, we maintain the roads and we, whether it's snow plowing or paving and, and so he's part of that, whether he's fine. Okay. Do you have any clarification? Do you have any clarification on the, do you have any clarification for us on I know we don't have the authority to enforce it, but on 
less inclined to grant an approval if it's going to set up a conflict with neighbors. Do you have any documentation on any restrictions well, for we, your association? And we, we all kind of think that, you know, if, if you go ahead and grant what he's asking, and I've been here almost 30 years now, and most of the time, no one's ever been in that barn. And uh, uh, when, when he bought it, the previous owners had somebody there for a short period of time, maybe for the same reason that he's trying to uh, do it. Um, make it look, get more money for the, the next person or whatever. But most of the time, even even with Mr. Dieterman, it's been pretty much uh, empty the whole time. But over the years, when it's not that way, uh, our, our neighborhood changed. So, so uh, sorry, back to the question. Is there anything specifically within the bylaws of your subdivision that restricts an accessory apartment? Well, the, other, the only thing that, um, when we bought there, we looked at the covenants, and, uh, and and that's what sold me personally, my wife, that the neighborhood we were moving into was going to be that way. And when you, we we were told that North Gilbert is four acre zoning, it, it, it's this and that, and that's what we bought in. And 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 so to have this thrown at us, that this this <laughs> North Gilbert isn't what we were led to believe and think. And things could be changed as easily as you know that what's happening could happen here, and it's not what we bought in the 30 years ago. And the other neighbors, you know, we moved to North Guilford because you know we thought there was uh, four acre zoning. He just had over two acres, and he, he wants to have a, two families living on two, two acres, and, and that's not. I, I understand, but so I'm reading in that there there. Please, you haven't given us anything. There are no covenants that you can detail for us. Do, do we have? Them? And, and, and in the covenants, it states it states that basically no one sh no one should be allowed to listed all the structures where nobody should be allowed to live. And it specifically said no one should be allowed to live in a barn. And it's it's and you used an occupancy of the covenants. And that's what we did. We all bought in there. Um, hold on. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Reggie? Yes. Hypothetically, if we deny the permit, if we do, what happens to the work that's there? Well, he has to remove the kitchen. Oh, that's it? Yeah. You mean remove the refrigerator? And the, the stove and the refrigerator right. and the sink. of that. It's been there for 30 years. I'm not looking to have it as a two-family house. I'm looking at it for people to have their family there. So as an example, are you, are you suggesting that when my son, a photographer, my other son, comes up from New York, he can't stay in there? Then why not? Well, my daughter came for a summer with her daughter. She's a baker in Atlanta. She has her business. She came up with her daughter for the summer. And as I said, I love my daughter, I love my granddaughter, but that's where they stay. Yeah, I mean, I think I can perhaps answer that question if you want me to. The, um, what you've applied for is uh, a special permit that allows for the creation of an accessory, what we call, what the zoning regulations call an accessory apartment in a detached building. Any, any property owner in Guilford in a residential zone subject to certain parameters can make an application for a special permit to create an accessory apartment in a detached building, which is in your case, or in, in the principal dwelling. There are a number of things that have to, it has to conform to a number of standards. It can't be any larger than a thousand square feet. Um, it, it can't, um, it can be occupied by anyone. It doesn't have to be a family member. Wh whether you rent it or give it away, it's not something we have any jurisdiction over. Who lives there uh, or how many people live there, it's not something we have any jurisdiction over. The other important criteria is that the owner of the property has to live in either the apartment or in the principal dwelling, right. which would be the case here. 
So um, the definition of an apartment is a, is a place that has a bathroom, a living area, and a kitchen. Which it does, and that's how I got Right. And if, you were, if the special permit were denied, you would be ordered to convert that building, which is now has those three elements, into a, to eliminate the, the, the parts of it that make it a, a separate apartment, which would be the kitchen. So why would you, would, you could remove the why kitchen. Would, why would my kids not be allowed to stay there? Your kids can stay there. But we they, don't really, can't have they, can't have a, they can't have a cooking facility because you're not, you wouldn't be allowed to have an accessory apartment. It doesn't make any difference who lives there. You could, you know, it could be nuns, it could be motorcycle gang. We don't have any jurisdiction over that. It could be your family or anyone else. You can rent it for whatever amount of money you can rent it for. That's, those are the areas of, we don't have any jurisdiction over any of those activities. I can't imagine, I read, have you read the governance? No. Okay. Well, you we I trust you do what it's, it's, you need to do. I, the, problem don't have us, the problem that, that George is trying to say is we have no, the covenants have nothing to do with this matter to us. They don't. Yeah, so then I not feel allowed to pay for it properly for an accessory apartment? And then I not? No. I didn't? Not that I know of. Did, we, we, didn't know, we didn't know about the covenants until these people brought it up. After you applied. You, so... Anyway. No, where's the no? Could you explain that? The, the covenants are a legal matter. We we can't we cannot we cannot make a decision based on the fact that there's a there's a existing covenants that we should not be cons from my perspective we should not be considering that as part of this application period. It could become a legal matter because if we approve it, we approve it, and there they're then concerned about it, they could file or take legal action against you based okay. on the covenant. But, but that's not our jurisdiction. Huh? But it, there is no restrictions. There, there, there is. is. There is. It doesn't matter, but there is. Clearly, there is. Okay, well, I have I'm clear. sure you'll do the right thing, whatever that is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I might just move in there myself. So if I live on my house in that apartment, you're saying it can't have a stove. Right. It doesn't matter whether anyone lives there. It's the physical premises that the Planning and Zoning Commission has jurisdiction over. Who lives there or, 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 or nobody lives there. You won't, if they deny this permit, you can't have an apartment there. Under Williams, when this building was originally developed or renovated in 85 or 87, um, he had a special permit approval that authorized him to create an office. I think he described it as an office in that building. Sometime during the period of time after that was granted, this kind of it morphed into an apartment. You're saying that it was probably around 1985 or 87. Right. Um, the, uh, so what you would be ordered to do would be to remove the kitchen if this permit is not granted. Now, whether or not the covenants are applicable or whether they allow something or don't allow something. Am it's I not some microwave. Microwave. I just went to my house. Yeah. 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 We need a little diversity in there, so I'll look for the proper family for that. But we really can't take that into consideration because it's not a government law that we could do. So All right, it's, so it, it's I think we should stop wasting time with the covenants, please. Does everybody so. agree? It to death. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to close this. I don't think there's anybody else here. We've heard you and you've heard you. I think. Statements for, statements against. Yeah. Statements for, statements against. Uh, I'm going to ask that we. Um, make move. a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Let's go on to. Uh, to uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's it's closed now, so we'll, we're going to deliberate. Oh. No, 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 no. We haven't done that yet. That's Let's coming up soon. Okay. I make a motion. Thank you. The, uh, uh, the Revise the agenda. Second, please. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. So the only matter that we need, that we're, we're going to talk about tonight is this, um, 
Is the Zimmerman there? Uh, Zimmerman. Huh? Zimmerman. Zimmerman, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so uh, to, to move this along, would someone either read a motion to approve or deny? One or the other? Uh, okay. I'll start with the approval. Okay, Let's see what happens. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve an application for an accessory apartment for Neil Dinnerman, 2631 Durham Road, Map 105, Lot 2, as shown on an application dated 8716 and as heard at a public hearing on September 21st and October 5th, 2016. The application is approved with the following conditions that the approval is based upon the finding that it conforms with the zoning code. The special permit is effective October 14th, 2016 and upon filing with the town clerk. Does anybody want to second that? Second. Well, let's talk about this. Well, we've had a uh, neighbor talk about it having adverse impact, both on the quality of the life in the neighborhood, but also possibly the value of the property. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, we had a neighbor speak about the impact, negative impact on quality of life and also the value of their properties. And those are one of the two of the key elements we use to make decisions. Um, and, and I find some, some truth to that. Um, on the other hand, it's been that way for a very long period of time, and that sort of complicates the decision. Um, so I, I am of mixed feelings on this. What are your thoughts? I think that it's definitely a tough decision, but you know, when, you, when somebody that wasn't professional, I don't believe they were in a professional capacity when they spoke about the, the adverse impact that's gonna have, it's an opinion. I, I mean, this is something that we've done before. We set precedents that we grant these if it's a special permit, unless there was some, something completely erroneous with it. As much as I would respect the want to respect the covenant, we can't legally do right. that. And it's clear in there that it says that it's not any structure isn't supposed to. But if you go with what you know we've done in the past, unfortunately, um, well, I think unfortunately, we've done, I think we've gone both ways. I know uh, uh, last month we did this application for a year yeah, that was to remove their kitchen. I think. Yeah. Well, that but that had nothing in it, and they brought in. It started out with no running water. In, they probably, just went ahead probably, and did that. Probably as a barn. Well, they had a permit for an office. No, so, it was a shed. Right. right. What, what did this have? Did this have a this, permit? This got a permit for an office. Right. So it would have had running water for an office? Sure, they put running water and heat bathroom. in. Bathroom, sink. Sure. Reggie, did you inspect this permit? Yes. Bathroom. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's, it's livable? It's what? It, it's livable. I think they live in it. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it is. And one thing I would say, and I don't know if we have to do this now, but the motion, and, and I'm, maybe I jump to second it, but I would definitely want to make sure that a building inspector does inspect it yeah. to make sure if it is approved, to your point, I believe, about fire going in there, something happened, knowing what's in there. You can inspect it, but as George already said, there's no teeth behind it. I mean, you can walk through and say, this is out of code, this is dangerous, and they've inspected it. No, I didn't say there was none. I just said I'm not sure. I don't think we can. We can't. We can't enforce the building code or the or the fire code. If they do an inspection, if they have authority to do order something. They can certainly do it, but whether they do have authority to require some improvement to meet the code, it's something I don't know the answer to. I mean, maybe the maybe the built maybe the windows well, aren't proper for egress well, they, windows. Well, they absolutely. I would assume could. Because then they could say that it's it's not livable not until safe. unsafe to be hap, 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 habitable. Habitable. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. And until it's brought up to code, well, that's true too. Could I, Reggie, read, read for the record? Um, I've been out inspecting um, apartments with a building inspector that were illegal, and then we approved them. And he has asked them to change windows. And he also tells them they have to put up the uh, smoke detectors. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I forgot about smoke detectors. Very important. I, uh, I guess, I guess if, if, 
the way I feel about it is, I gotta separate myself from the covenants. If if we if in fact could require, it sounds like we can, that Mr. Dinneman invite the building inspector out there and inspect it, the fire whoever goes out there, I would be inclined to approve this. Without that, I, I would not vote for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. So, um, would this motion include that condition? No. We, we, we can add that. Sure. Of course you can. It's your turn. Just make it short. Uh, <laughs> Jump in. Jump right in. <laughs> the question, getting, I realize what you're getting into, making sure that this place is safe, but let me ask you a question. This is a single family house. And what's to, ha what's to happen when he sells the house and somebody say, comes in and decides to rent out that apartment? Now you got a two family. It's a separate building. What? What's your, uh, it's a separate building. That is, in fact, what you're authorizing, you're authorizing the creation of the separate That's apartment. That's what I'm saying. What the, what the owner does with it is not within your jurisdiction, whether they rent it or not, or give it away, or who they rent it to. It's not something that the Planning and Zoning Commission has any jurisdiction over. Once the apartment's created, assuming it meets the building codes, if there are applicable codes, the owner of the prop and the owner of the property lives there. The owner of the property has to live either in the apartment or the main house. Then who they rent it to or whether they rent it is entirely up to them. And that goes for when they sell it too. And that's for every apartment. And that carries for subsequent owners, correct. The new owner would also, if they wanted to rent it, they certainly would be able to as long as they lived either in the apartment or the main house. When that carries in perpetuity. Is everybody else in this community there, are they all single families? Pardon me? Are they all single families that are, are in this group? In the neighborhood? Yeah. Um, I don't know. There are, this, this commission approves accessory apartments pursuant to this regulation quite frequently. Um, they are you know, hardly a meeting goes by where an accessory apartment isn't acted on or approved. So they're quite so, they're quite common around town. So what would be our reason not to? The only reason would be safety. And if we can put um, um, things in here to ensure that a fire inspector and a bowling inspector takes a look at it and make sure it's okay, I'm 100% on but board. But on a special permit, could we just say, no, we don't want to approve it because we don't want to? No, so we have to have a reason. Yeah. Right, we, and it has yeah. negative. Well, there's, 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 that, because I've been grappling with that thought, too. Well, he uses it, and his daughter lives there, or his son comes and stays there. The next person could say, I'm renting it to a, uh, anybody. Right. So, well, in, in the denial, it says, <laughs> no. Well, in the denial, it says it has a negative <laughs> impact on the neighborhood and is inconsistent with the single family character of the neighborhood. So we're, we're given, staff has been kind enough to give us words that um, will withstand scrutiny. Those will have an adverse impact on the neighborhood. My, my take here is staff did a cold water, did the checklist like they always do diligently and finds that it satisfies the requirements of the zoning code. Um, I mean, but the, the it doesn't satisfy the covenant. But the co again, the covenant is not our purview. We're not enforcing it. But we're but only, we're, you know, only doing the zoning code. one eye like this. Yeah. Right. So and we're setting up neighbors for potentially battling each other. We can't hear anything else from you. We're not allowed to hit public No, because it's closed. closed. You can't, you can't Sorry. touch us. Alan, one of the reasons that we have accessory apartments is that when people start to age out and they need to be able to stay in Guilford, they need to be able to have an alternate income. So there's a mechanism in place where you can put an apartment either in the house or in another structure to enable you to stay in Guilford. Right. So this would come under that kind of uh, okay. way of thinking. It's actually encouraged. So, I, from what I from what I'm gathering, though, I think you need to amend the motion. Your motion, then, at the very least, to include the the applicant inviting the fire marshal and the building inspector to do an inspection as one of the conditions. I would support that. Because the, if you the, would. the question is, do we want to also say, subject to them coming out and doing it, and it being compliant? Right. Well, if it's not, then they're not going to issue, they won't issue us. Yeah, that's sign off the on compliance it. with those yeah. things are not our, it's not under our. But it's under theirs, and they can, right. they do so that. All we can say is that he has to invite them out. Then it's up to them to do their job. Is our If you want to, you don't have to. be conditional? 
Like, whose motion is it? Is it Bouchard? Yeah, he made it. So why don't we do this? Hey, George. Yeah. You read the section here where some section is it approved and others are denied. Can you get some clarification for that? Sorry. Well, there's two different motions here. We could have used either yeah. one. Oh, okay. No, we just is, is that what it is? Are yes. you? For Correct. purpose of discussion, we brought this. Uh, we brought the approach. We're not sure what you want to do. We write the motions. Is it required to have pretty sure to you access your department one. by appropriate? Yeah, that's a good point. Do we get any back taxes from that? Nope. Staff. No recapture. Town staff. Town staff. The town doesn't. Town apparently has a policy that mm -hmm. they will not yeah. go after any taxes that you may have incurred yes. owing. Okay, so here's here's a who who uh, made the motion? I you did, did right? Okay, we'll, we'll start. Up. We'll re re motion the motion. Voted that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve an application for an accessory apartment for Neil Berman, <coughs> 2631 Durham Road, Map 105, Lot 2, as shown on an application dated 8716, and is heard at public hearing on September 21st and October 5th, 2016. The applicant the application is approved with the following condition that the applicant is required to have inspections of uh, accessory, accessory apartment by appropriate town staff within, within, 60, within days. 60 days within within well it, it would be up to them to have a schedule but I would say within 30 days prior to the special permit in the town clerk's office. Oh, that's a good idea. Prior, prior to filing of the to special, filing of special permit with the town clerk. Special permit permit with the town clerk. With town clerk. Okay. Frank, you, uh, I will reset it. Just one, one, just read again the conditions. The condition is the applicant is required to have inspection of accessory apartment by appropriate town staff prior to filing with the special permit with the town clerk. I mean, okay. for license safety purposes or yeah, well, code? I mean, for all purposes. Right now, there's no well, requirement. Yeah, from the town staff. Yeah, but they would be ne negligent if, if you were, if you asked the building inspector to go in there to inspect it. He if, if, if he just turned around and walked out, he would be negligent in doing his job. Is that correct? I think, yeah, I don't think we don't have to worry about that. He will do it. Or the fire marshal <laughs> either. They're not going to. They're not going to take a risk of going in there and not saying, "Hey, we need to replace the fire." The fire. Yeah, I believe that's true. Yeah, I, I would have to. Anybody else want to add anything? Okay, we ready to vote then? All in favor of the revised uh, motion, please say aye. 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 You're voting against. Against. So it was carried. Carried. No, I vote what? Did you vote four, four five, did you six vote to one. Four five? <coughs> I understand where you're coming from. Many, many times. Now, do you need, you, do you have that written down, Lisa? Yes, I do. You have that? Yes, um, yeah. you, okay, all right. All right, so moving right along. Uh, applications to be received. We're going to do applications to be received. Mr. Chairman. Would you read them, please? I make a motion that we uh, receive uh, Mary Beeman First Christ Church um, and set a hearing date of 11 2. Second. 11 2, that's what it says here. 11 2. Continue to 11 2. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to Soundview Road Ally Metro Pooch that we receive the hear, uh, receive the application and set a hearing date of 11 2 and also 11 16. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Local um, Mayor Coastal Area Management Site Plan. Can I make a motion, sir? I am pleased to make a motion for uh, John Markowski, is a Boy Scout who's leading the charge on rebuilding the Grass Island Shack. Young gentleman is doing an excellent job. He's a, got great leadership potential. And I make a motion that we receive and set a public hearing date for 1019. Second. Anybody, uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you looking for all of those words in there? Kevin Murphy. 
Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that uh, Kevin Murphy pulls by Murphy uh, that we receive the application and set a public hearing date for 11 2. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Zoning amendments. Petition from the Economic Development Commission to amend 72. 273-47 site maintenance outdoor display of merchandise. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we receive and set a public hearing date of 11-2 and 11-16. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, I have, uh, we're on to committees. I have here with me, uh, this is delayed because of me. I have um, a request to appoint um, two gentlemen to the Planning Committee, uh, I do have, uh, for anyone that would like to look at it, I have, they're both well qualified, I have their resumes, if anybody would like to look at them. You're comfortable. They're good, okay. they, they're both uh, highly, highly, uh, so you'll it's right in there, it's right in there. Uh, then I'll appoint them. Good, good work. Yeah. Uh, the second one is a Design Review Committee to appoint Mr. John Cunningham as a regular member of the Design Review Committee. Could someone help me with John Cunningham? Because I T E C he's the landscape guy. Okay. Good. Yeah. And I know he was on the tree advisory. He, he did, I think he did a lot of the Jacob Speak project too, didn't he? He did. He was, he was okay. former right. chairman of the uh, historic district. All right. So we're gonna I'm gonna appoint him then officially tonight. He Congratulations. Said he said you gotta take that mister off. Yeah. It's just he's John. just John Cunningham. Okay. So congratulations John Cunningham. to Mr. Cunningham. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we pay the bills for 14168 to Shore Publishing. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, show, uh, discuss and set show uh -huh. cause hearing date to consider rescinding site application approval for MAC Management 299 Long Hill Road, Map 73, Lot 10, as shown on schematic plan SCG Emergency Response Center, dated 6. 816 revised 6 2016 said approval granted on July 20th by this commission. Uh, do you want to just make a quick background thing here? Yeah, well, I'm glad you asked. I'm sure that this item probably confused you since you've never seen anything like this before. Um, Guilford Planning Zoning Commission has never done this before, at least not in the 30 years or so that I'm familiar with your, your activities. Um, you may recall that in July this past year, you approved the site plan revision for MAC management. The site plan revision was to authorize the Southern Connecticut Gas Company to use a portion of the uh, subject property for uh, their purposes. It included uh, a parking area, uh, some driveway improvements, uh, and an area for storage of uh, materials, uh, outside materials that they use in their business stone and topsoil and similar. Also, uh, uh, all their plan also included occupying an existing uh, building on the property that had been used for uh, offices in the past. The uh, site plan application was approved um, on July 20th by this commission. The activity, uh, the improvement activity commenced uh, and very recently, in fact, as of last week, adjoining property owner uh, residential property owner uh, complained to Reggie about the activity that was going on. Uh, in his opinion, it was in violation of the zoning regulations uh, because a uh, portion of the MAC management property was located in a residential zone as well as the house that he lived in was in a residential zone immediately adjacent to this property. Um, the uh, Reggie investigated the uh, the situation as Mr. Uh, Moritz, who I believe is here, um, uh, requested, um, ascertained that yes, that appeared to be correct. Um, the uh, portion of the subject property is in the residential zone and this activity that was approved uh, uh, probably violates the zoning regulations. Um, Reggie not knowing exactly what to do under these circumstances, especially since the appeal period for the uh, uh, site plan application had already expired or lapsed, um, uh, sought advice as to what to do from um, our legal counsel, uh, Ms. Millman, who um, 
referred the matter to Chuck Andrus. Um, Chuck and Reggie and I had a meeting last week uh, to talk about all of this. Um, it's new ground. Um, it's not readily clear what we can do about it. Uh, Chuck, however, was of the opinion that we should uh, ask you to hold a hearing to consider uh, rescinding the, the site plan approval. Um, he's not recommending that you rescind the site plan approval. No one's recommending that. But what we're asking you to do is rescind the site plan approval or consider, excuse me, set a hearing to consider uh, rescinding the site plan approval based on the fact that the approval was uh, occurred uh, with information that was not correct. Um, so. Can we ask how much of it is in residential and how much of it is in commercial or industrial, whatever it is? Sure. Um, we didn't really come prepared to go into all those details. That would be the purpose of the hearing, but I believe there's about, um, we actually scaled this off the other day, correct me if I'm wrong, right? It's something like 75 feet of the subject property, the MAC management property, is actually in a residential zone. The zone line, you know, is not really precisely surveyed or drawn by the town. You know, we had to superimpose the GIS mapping on the subject site plan. Um, to sort of ascertain where it was. Um, a lot of the activity that's gone on in this site goes back, you know, many, many years. Uh, this was a construction contractor's facility and home for, you know, going back, you know, 30, 40 years or more. So there's a lot of non-conforming activity that occurs on the property. That is, say, in industrial use that has taken place in this area that's residential. What additional activity was authorized by this special per by this approval by the site plan approval is something that we'll discuss in more detail at the hearing. There clearly is some. Uh, clearly, the adjoining property owners are grieved because this activity took place without without the proper approvals, apparently. Um, so, uh, in the interest of fairness, I think Chuck rightly thought that this would be a procedure that at least would get in a transparent and public way, all the issues on the table, including the legal issues, like what can you really do? Um, and this is somewhat new ground. There's no authority in statute for rescinding site plan approvals. Um, it seems fair or possibly fair under certain circumstances where you might be able to do that, but again, we don't really know. All of that will be fleshed out in more detail at this hearing. Um, but um, that's kind of, a, in a nutshell, what what this is all about. It is one of the options, not rescinding it, but brokering an agreement for a 75-foot buffer to the back of their property with trees or something to, to limit the viewscape? That's, that's, some, that's a possibility. The, the um, now bro I don't know what you meant brokering, but the, one of the things that sort of Reggie and I have struggled with, we met with all the relevant par parties to all this. We've talked to them. We explained to them what we are doing, which I've just explained to you, <coughs> what the circumstances are. Um, um, we, 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 don't put our, we, don't, we don't pretend to put, want to put our, or nor do we want to put ourselves in the position where we're trying to mediate something. You know, this would be. Would that fall to us? No, I don't think you should be doing that Who should either. be doing it? No, I think it would be something that they would probably do between themselves if they want to. Now, the. The, the 75 foot is um, there's a couple of there's a couple of things, and we can go into this much more carefully at the hearing and show you on the maps what all this means, for example. But <clears throat> there, there are two issues. One is where is the zone line actually occur, and there's no there, there's no provision for building, for example, buildings or doing any kind of industrial use, creating any kind of industrial use in a residential zone. Uh, so one of the issues is what was there before, you know, what is not, what is grandfathered or non-conforming about the previous use that can, could still continue in the residential zone. Um, <clears throat> another, another uh, part of our zoning code that perhaps you're thinking of is there's a provision in the zoning regulations that allows, that requires a 75-foot buffer from a residential zone line 
the area within which you can't put parking areas, uh, storage, uh, driveways, and so forth associated with an industrial use, except by special permit of the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Planning and Zoning Commission can authorize that, presumably when there's landscaping and other buffering to the residential property. <coughs> so, so it'd be 75 on top of the 75. Right, 75 from the zone line. Yeah. One of the options would be, let's, <coughs> let's say, let's say for example, hypothetically, let's say you rescinded the special the site plan approval. Um, the applicant could come in to request that the zone line be moved to, say, for example, the property line. This might be a this one might be a sort of a logical thing. We normally like to see zone lines on property lines. Except if it's going to impact negatively. Well, he would, this property owner would, if they made some agreement, would, again, it's very hypothetical, would not object to it because they, that would be part of the agreement. Exactly. So the zone, line, the zone line would be moved and then they could make an application for a special permit. I know this is more complicated than we probably wanted to get into now. Could make an application for a special permit to do some of this uh, great driveway or parking area within that area subject to your approval again presumably the resident wouldn't object to it because they've already reached an agreement right, with so, the property so, owner so theoretically he could have his 75 foot residential plus a portion of the other 75 and still have leverage enough to cut some sort of deal with them so he'd have a broke he'd have a buffer of about 125 feet if he gave up say the first 25 feet and let him put a, a thing yeah, there and there's a lot of possibilities along those lines. How this will all unfold, you know, it's very unpredictable. Very that's, very that's uh, so. So, so what all we're asking you to do right now is set a public hearing date, uh, suggesting uh, 11 3. Mr. Uh, Chairman, excuse me, 11, 11 2. 2. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we set a hearing date for this on 11 2. Second. Any discussion about that? Then let's get this to the All right. All right. Let's get it over with. All those in favor say aye. Aye. It was unanimous. Thank you, Thanks for reminding us. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes. I read them and they're substantially correct from what I saw in the video. Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 I'm, uh, I'm abstaining I did I didn't read them. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in as much as there's no more business before the commission, I make a motion that we close the hearing. Somebody second that, please. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Good work, sir. Good work. Thanks. Thank you.